Here at the event in Jerusalem, we're with another Ole. When did you make Aliyah, by the way? A few years back. A few years back. Uh, and your name? Lyle Nirenberg. Okay, great. Now, you know, Alana, in Israel, we're talking a lot about the uh, relations between Israel and America. Absolutely. And uh, you have lots of experience. First of all, tell us uh, where you were back then. What was your job? Still have a lot of connections there also. I was uh, the chief Republican counsel on the House Judiciary Committee on um, what is now referred to as crime, terrorism, and homeland security. Mm -hmm. And they added on more recently investigations. Very, very active, very, very active area. And since 9 11 has become increasingly and increasingly, increasingly um, active. Um, and you know, around 9 11, for, let's jump already to the Israel issue. Around 9 11, there was a lot of understanding that there's uh, much uh, to, to discuss with Israel about homeland issues. Correct. Did you see that back then? I was in Israel actually during that time period. But, um, and, uh, and I'm very active in uh, promoting pro Israel events among um, the uh, Christian right in America. And I need their help also so I can go from parish to parish and speak to these people to educate them about uh, what we used to say in the American currency and God we trust and the un unfortunate increasing defragmentation and polarization of the American public in this regard. Mm -hmm. But now in terms of what you're seeing these days, now you're a, a Republican, yeah. so uh, I guess your opinions about the Obama administration are are not surprising, but how do you see the U.S.-Israel relations? Some are saying that even if it would be Republican, it won't be so simple. How do you see this? Okay, well, this is a story. Um, um, we still have a majority, uh, and I've had a majority since I made uh, Aliyah to, to Israel, of uh, Republicans in the House. Um, that's where all of our authorization of, of budgets and spending occurs. Um, and uh, in the coming months, we'll have an election for the... Uh, all of the House of Representatives where I served and a third of the Senate. Mm -hmm. This will be very, very determinative, but the problem is basically what we see happening here, even within the, within the Republican Party, as America unfortunately has detached itself from its connection to the Bible, to connection to, connection to, to the, what, what, what we call the Tanakh. There have been inevitable uh, implications to Israel-American relations. So you're saying it's not only especially with the Democrats, this is true also with the Republicans to some extent? Um, it's true with some of the Republicans, um, but we see now about, about a third of America, the, um, the, re the re uh, religious right in the, in the, in the Christians um, are very supportive of Israel through money and also, and I'm supposed to be talking to them, going from parish to parish, and need their contact and their help also to go to more people to more explaining of what's going on here. Um, and unfortunately, as I mentioned, um, as generations went on, and they can testify to this as well, um, we saw this in spring break, for instance, in the United States. There were various uh, um, remarks on Fox News regarding this, that parents were horrified at what their kids want to do on spring break. These were normal Republican families. Mm -hmm. But we saw each generation an increased detachment from God's Bible. And um, so lack of values as, as, results. Saying as the community, as the public, as the, the people become more uh, secular, it also detaches them from their automatic or some side or sort of connection or support to Israel. Yeah, absolutely. And I should also mention to you, in uh, about two years ago now, um, I was asked to um, work on some of the congressional uh, elections and uh, also on uh, the presidentials. And what we wanted to do is um, affect some of the. Uh, quote, automatic dem uh, democratic support by certain Jewish groups in America. Automatic, without even asking any questions, ballot after ballot, they were supporting the Democratic candidate, presidential and otherwise. Mm -hmm. So what we did, we would call up people or use mass media such as Facebook and otherwise to explain to them, just give us a minute of your time. And it was that issue of support in Israel that, that, that could make a change? In terms support of Israel, but also other issues as well. You should know more about this candidate what they said about Israel, what they said about Israel's right to self-defense. And as a result, we managed in many different elections, including the presidential, to decrease Jewish support for Democratic candidates from 10 to 12 percent in certain, in certain jurisdictions. Okay, now let's uh, talk a, bit, a little bit about Aliyah, immigration. In wake of the tensions between Washington and Jerusalem, how do you feel about Aliyah these days? Do you feel that people are feeling like, uh, you know, does it maybe even people want to, you know, go back home to Israel? 
I said to people, when people asked me in America, um, when I picked up my bags and left, somebody offered me a much bigger position in Washington. I said, I'm going to move to the, back to the Holy Land. He said, that's great. And um, basically, um, people asked me, why are you leaving? And I said, you have to realize, we've been living in a motel room for 2,000 years. We're so used to seeing the inside of a motel room, we forgot what home looks like. The United States has been good to us, less good in recent years, but good to us nonetheless, but it's nonetheless in a hotel room. I wanted to go back home. And as we all know in America and also in Israel, the press exaggerates generally what's going on. And the language is the barrier, but I managed to learn, thank God, the language as well. Anyone can learn it. Um, and the, um, basically, to one, in one, way, one way or another, everyone's family here. Mm -hmm. And America doesn't enjoy that. Once you go out into the city, there, there's not a family aspect. So there's much more of a family net here, even b between so-called strangers. Um, and this is your country. When you open up the calendar, when you see the names in Hebrew, all of a sudden you realize, where have I been my whole life? Wow. Okay. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you for inspiring Thank words. Thank you. And uh, you're here. Come Thank on. Thank you so much. It's a great hotel, but come on. Okay. Thank you.